Hey, it's Daniel. Like I said, life is good today. I'm here with the famous Bill Harry. And let me introduce who just showed up. This is the famous Leslie Cavendish. And Leslie is famous for many things, including cutting the Beatles' hair. So we're gonna sit here for a little while, and we're gonna be discussing different rock and roll dream stuff, things that have happened in their lives. And uh, they've been explaining some very cool things to me that I've never even known. So we're gonna start with Bill. He's gonna tell us a story of some things that's happened with John Lennon. And uh, Leslie here is gonna tell us a few stories too. Well, we're, just gonna, up, we're just gonna sit here, we're gonna have a few drinks, and we're gonna have some fun. Bill, tell us a story. Bill, can I say one thing? No comment. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Right. Tell us a story about uh, the John Lennon story. No, the, the story that I can maybe interested in is tell a story about the Apple Christmas party. Oh yes, there was um, a party at Apple. We loved Apple. We used, always used to go to, to Apple and of course um, um, Derek Taylor used to always call me to go along and listen to the previews of uh, the forthcoming Beatles albums. I used to take everybody along there, the Beach Boys, Mike Moorcock, the science fiction writer, because John was very much into science fiction, John Lennon. And of course, Ringo even more so. But Apple itself, I mean, I, I used to love going to Apple. It was a nice, relaxing place. And uh, the Apple Christmas party, I mean, it was typical 60s. I mean, you go in in the floor, and there you had Haley reading all the tarot cards because John and Yoko wouldn't go a day without knowing their, what was in the tarot cards, you know? And um, he... You've got to remember, the, got to remember the, 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 the history of what was going on where everyone in America was going to Vietnam and yes. one of the we, me, and everybody else is, is living a life. And the life is a bit of... Diversity, wasn't it? Yes. It was diversity. And Things were happening that you would never yeah. really think. I mean, Apple was my second home because I used to go, that was my second summer. It was yeah. my summer. So I used to go up there and, as Bill said, yeah. you know, you meet people there. And yeah. That's how I met John Lennon then. Yeah. Taylor, who was doing all the tarot card readings, um, he was important to them on the day to day because every single day, John and Yoko wanted him to read their futures. But he actually read to John, he says, um, you should go back to Cynthia and not stay with Yoko. So he got the immediate sack and he joined the satanic church after this. And anyway, and there were the uh, Hells Angels guys there who um, uh, sort of, um, sort of well, had a bit of a, sort of knocking, a knocking people out of that. And the day, the day before, the, the evening before I happened to be in, the Revolution Club, which I did the PR for, and the Hells Angels came in, and, and a friend of ours were going on about me doing the Beach Boys and being involved and everything. And, and, the, uh, and, and the, the, the motorcycle people say, the Hells Angels from America says, we want you to take over our publicity. And I said, no way. And they said, you better. And I said, no way, and that's it. Because I come from Liverpool, don't know where they come from. And anyway, so we were there, and uh, you know, you had the, all the colourful clothes everyone was wearing, the girls in the corner feeding, breastfeeding the babies, and all this business. So I decided to wander upstairs, and I walked into a large room, and it was completely empty, but for two people in the centre of the room, on a carpet, dressed as Mother and Father Christmas, and that was John and Yoko, just sitting alone in this room, with nobody else around. Went over, John introduced me to Yoko, and she shook my hand. And that was the first time I met Yoko. And I was obviously to find that she didn't like to know a friend of John's who uh, he'd actually known before her. Because from then onwards, once the closeness began between John and Yoko, and when it was Len Ono, you know, in fact, they were one couple, you weren't two separate people anymore. Um, she didn't really like anyone who was in his life prior to that. So even Pete Shotton, his closest childhood friend, even Julian, his son, even Elton John, his friend, no one could get hold of John uh, unless they went through Yoko. They phoned the Dakota 
and she turned all of them down at various times from meeting and I think that that was one of the reasons why Paul didn't get many meetings with John after that. We're still having this amazing conversation with two legends in the music business just carrying on. So we're just going to continue this with them. Here we go. Because I used to go up where to Apple and used to see, see him now, Derek Taylor, sitting in his wicker mm. chair there. Yes. Cocktail yeah. party, drinks there, everything. And then I used to go in there uh, and do Peter Asher's hair and meet people mm. there and whatever, whatever, whoever came in. The smell of pot in the air. Smell of pot in the air. Um, John walked in. I always noticed, uh, you know, times I remember Ringo walked in and all the staff were happy. It wasn't like today that you had um, someone like you 2 or Riyama around where there's millions of people you could get to. At the time, there two people in reception, one guy at the desk there, anybody could walk in to enter Savile Row. So it wasn't that type of situation. And you go in there, and when Ringo walked in, it was, I, I, and Paul, oh, no, fine. And George floated in. And John, you always, I always noticed people sort of sat up, like the boss was coming in on edge. You didn't know what mood he'd be in. Um, and he walked upstairs, I remember Derek, and he just said, Who's he? And he said, oh, it's Leslie Cuts Pool here. So we'll get him to come in here and cut my hair in. I was like, said, what's he to go and cut his hair? So I first met John. And uh, that's also the second time I cut his hair there. There was a journalist on the first time, so he was talking about music. And the second time, there was this little lady. And when you cut hair, to tell me the truth, when you cut hair, long hair, the last thing you want to do is people moving their hair because you, you cut it. And I was cutting the hair, holding it in my hand, and it kept moving, it kept slipping out of my hands. And he kept saying, I never, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't explain to me, I don't understand you. And it was, it was nothing to do with music. It was a little oriental lady. That could be Yoko, I don't know. It was the very first time I met her. I never knew what would develop from that, but so. Hey, life is truly super fantastic today. And I want to thank my guests here again, Leslie and Bill. They're truly legends in the music business. And of course, both of them have met John Lennon. And I'm just uh, so in awe of both of them. Keep watching. A lot of good stuff coming.